Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Narayana Montufar. I am an author, astrologer, and artist who finds inspiration in the symbolic language of astrology. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel so I can bring you more content about spirituality, astrology, and other mystical practices. As a friendly reminder, I also created a video about the astrology of 2024. You can find it here on my profile. And I also have a free 2024 retrograde guide, which you can download on my website. I also very recently released horoscopes for Aquarius season for every zodiac sign. You will also find them on my YouTube channel. So today I am inspired, I felt inspired to talk about Chiron. Mm -hmm. Chiron, which is a very, very, very unique planetary body that was discovered pretty recently, actually, in 1977, and that is becoming more and more important to pay attention to. I myself have Chiron conjunct the Ascendant, and so I am a very Chironic person, which is the reason why I am a healer. Right now, Chiron is very activated, the beginning of 2024. And so I created this, this video with slides, I'm going to show you these slides pretty soon, to guide you in working with your Chiron placement. However, this is an evergreen video. It can always be watched. Because Chiron is really the key to unlocking the gift of the entire birth chart. Or at least that is what I believe and what a lot of other astrologers believe. So I will first explain to you the astronomy and the mythology of Chiron because those are really important to understanding the uniqueness of Chiron. I actually wrote a whole blog about this. I wrote over almost 2,500 words about Chiron, which I am going to be posting on my website pretty soon. So you can actually go there and also read this article if you feel more inspired to read instead of watching the video. So now I am going to share the slides. And so this mantra really resonates with me. I, I totally believe in always keeping a positive mindset and I totally believe in really bringing positivity into our lives. So this mantra might sound a little bit intense to you, like a tough love kind of mantra, but it really resonates, in my opinion, to, to the meaning of Chiron. And so I decided to put it here, turning hurt into healing, wounds into wisdom, and pain into power. Because Chiron is an alchemical force. We all have Chiron in our birth charts. Every single one of us has Chiron. And it, it relates to one of some of the deepest and hardest parts of us to explore. But when we alchemize pain into power, hurting the wisdom, we unlock the birth chart. And so here are the slides. And fearlessness is like a muse. That really also speak to me, speaks to me to what Chiron is, is the being fearless, like in the pursuit of our healing, in the pursuit of our healing. It is so important for us to, to be able to approach Chiron, to talk about Chiron, to share our chirotic wound. Mm -hmm. In astrology, Chiron is known as the wounded healer because he was the healer that couldn't heal himself. And we're going to explore why this is so important. And Chiron is an anomaly in every sense of the word. <laughs> Astronomically, astrologically, and mythologically. And that is what I want to bring to you today. And hopefully that will inspire you 
to go deeper into your Chiron placement. And that way you can unlock your full potential. Chiron's effects are some of a kind, are one of a kind. Mm -hmm. the, no other planetary body can do what Chiron does. And the reason why is because astronomically, Chiron is an anomaly. Mm -hmm. You will read online, and that is why you have to be very careful about what you read and the source. You will read that online that Chiron is an asteroid. That's not true. Chiron has some some similarities to an asteroid, but it is not an asteroid. You could you could think about Chiron as a half comet and half asteroid. It is an anomaly. And it is a mystery that scientists are still trying to understand. Because this is the thing. Asteroids travel in the asteroid belt, which is between Mars and Jupiter. Chiron doesn't travel in the asteroid belt. Actually, Chiron is positioned between Saturn and Uranus. And that is really important to understand, between Saturn and Uranus. On top of that, Chiron has... Um, I like an atmosphere similar to that of a comet. So it's like really dusty. And asteroids normally don't have that. Mm -hmm. I want to dive deeper into this for you to fully understand the uniqueness of Chiron. It has a special place in the sky. It has a special place in mythology. And it has a special place in our bird charts. Mm hmm here are some of the slides in case you want to uh, take a screenshot. I also post them on, on my Instagram. The NASA itself categorized Chiron as a centaur. Mm -hmm. It is a very specific kind of group of planetary bodies that were named after all the centaurs in Greek mythology. So Chiron is not an asteroid. Chiron is not a comet. Chiron is a centaur and a lot of blogs haven't caught up with this a lot of websites haven't caught up with this and a lot of the times it's because they don't really have a space to put it mm -hmm. let's say if you go to some websites where they have the planets the zodiac signs and then they have the asteroids there's no room for centaurs so sometimes chiron goes into the into the asteroid drop down and things like that but I, I believe this is really important for us to understand the uniqueness and the gift that Chiron has for us. Mm -hmm. Mythologically, Chiron is incredibly important because as a centaur, mm -hmm, Chiron was different, just like Chiron is different to the asteroids and the comets and all of that. Chiron was also different to all the other beings that had the same composition of like half horse, half human. Mm -hmm. In mythology, centaurs were really aggressive. They were very geared towards war and violence and just horrendous things. But Chiron was not like that. Mm hmm what is really important for you to understand about Chiron is that Chiron's biggest wound was abandonment from the get-go. Chiron was, um, Chiron came out of a union or, well, it might not even be a real union, right? Like there, there are many different sides of the story, but um, the union between uh, Kronos or Saturn and the nymph mm -hmm. because he came out half and half animal and half human Saturn was immediately abandoned by both of his parents and this is really important because a lot of us who have Chiron conjunct the sun or, or square the moon or even very close to an angle mm -hmm, have this wound of 
abandonment. It is very obvious to them. And even if there is no abandonment, maybe one of the parents was checked out or even not, or just kind of like not emotionally available. And this relates to the mythology of Chiron. So abandonment is like, I would say, the first wound of Chiron. However, Chiron was adopted mm -hmm, by a teacher and also became a teacher, a healer, a mystic, and an astrologer. Barbara Henclow, an astrologer who did a lot of a very extensive work on Chiron, affirms that Chiron might have been the very first astrologer, the first astrologer ever. That was part of his toolkit to help other people heal. Chiron was the mentor of a lot of very prominent figures like Hercules. Mm -hmm. that, that's important to remember too because he mentored a lot of people. He mentored a lot of um, heroes. Mm -hmm. well, Sepius was one of them too. But the second one that Chiron has is was a physical wound. Mm -hmm. During battle with Hercules, actually, because they, they would they would be in battle together a lot of the times. Hercules hurt Chiron with a poisonous arrow. Mm -hmm. Normally, any other mortal would have died because the 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 arrow was carrying poison. And, but Chiron was immortal. Mm -hmm. So remember, he was the son of Saturn. Mm -hmm. He couldn't die. And he was always in pain. That is the second wound of Chiron. And actually, those two wounds, the wound of abandonment and the wound of physical pain, is what coined that wounded healer for Chiron. Mm hmm Eventually, Chiron gives away his immortality so he can actually die because he was in pain. And he did that in exchange for the freedom of Prometheus. That's another story. Mm -hmm. Prometheus is a god that brought fire to humanity. Mm -hmm. But he did that at the expense of his own freedom because the other gods didn't want to bring fire to humanity. That's another mythological story, but it's really important because Prometheus is, the, the story of Prometheus actually relates to, to the planet Uranus, mm -hmm, which is the, the planet that's after Chiron. So there, there's a relationship between Chiron, Saturn, and Uranus. Mm -hmm. If you remember, Saturn is the last planet that's visible to the naked eye. Then there's Uranus, but Uranus is invisible to the naked eye, at least most of the time. Mm -hmm. Some people have claimed they've seen it. Um, Chiron is the bridge from the inner planets to the outer planets. And Barbara Hancloud calls it the rainbow bridge. Mm -hmm. And the outer planets, which are Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, relate more to the upper chakras, mm -hmm. to the enlightenment. Well, we have the, the inner planets ruling the, low, the lower chakras here, all the way from here to here. The outer planets rule the highest chakras, which relate to our connection to the universe. Mm -hmm. So this is really important to remember that Chiron actually died to release Prometheus, who was sent to the underworld for bringing fire to humanity. That is when Chiron finally died. He figured he was always hurt and always feeling pain anyway. So he might as well let Prometheus be fret. And this is a crazy story, but it really resonates too in the sense that Chiron represents that, 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 that kind of like primal and spiritual combination of like the, the animal and the human. Mm -hmm. So this, the psychology of Chiron is, is really fascinating. And, and I'm going to read one of the, one of the things that I wrote in this, 
in this article because I just really, really like it. it. At a psychological level, Chiron's dual nature as both a centaur and a wise teacher reflects the complexities of human existence and the constant struggle between the primal and the intellectual. Mm -hmm. So the psychology of Chiron is actually really important to pay attention to as well, because a lot of the times the wound, the wound that we carry, the chirotic wound that we carry is psychological. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the wound would be physical, like I was explaining, and sometimes the wound would be related to family many other times. But also we have a psychological wound, mm -hmm. like the inability of feeling like we can do something or the inability to be able to manifest something because there's something preventing us in our minds from reaching it. So the astrology of Chiron, the wounded healer. Mm -hmm. This relates to a deep wound that we all carry, sometimes from a past life, sometimes from birth, sometimes from family preconditioning, a lot of the times from past lives, actually. And so it's really interesting because when I started doing astrology, which is like over 10 years ago, this archetype of Chiron was thought to be kind of like a wound you can get rid of. Mm-hmm. That that's what at least was explained to me a few times. It's like, this is a wound that there's nothing you can do about, that it can't get better, and it's just a wound. And remember, mm -hmm, Chiron was cited in 90, 1977, a time when everything related to healing, alternative medicine, um, meditation, and all of the stuff that back then people called hippie mm -hmm, was just taking off. This is really important because every time we discover a planetary body happens when humans are psychologically ready to integrate that planet into the collective, not, not just into the collective, but into our psyche. Mm -hmm. That's the sighting of Chiron, 1977. If you look back, that's when all of these woo-woo, what people call woo-woo stuff, was just starting to taking off. And Barbara Hanclow, in her book, Chiron, the Rainbow Bridge, between the inner and outer planets, she affirms that the sighting of Chiron in 1977 was kind of like the promise of astrology, of, of astrology's comeback as a mystical science. And it makes a lot of sense because Chiron was believed to be the very first astrologer. Mm -hmm. People who have a deep, uh, 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 a very highlighted Chiron in their charts are carrying a wound, like I said, from a past life or from childhood. But when they're able to alchemize the pain into power, when they're able to to go to that wound and integrate it, they become some of the most amazing healers, amazing mystics. They become tarot readers, they become astrologers, they become Reiki healers. That is the alchemizing of Chiron. Of course, you're still going to have the past, you're still going to have the wound, but the wound is alchemized into power. So as we're learning more and more and more and more about Chiron, I personally almost never do a, a birth chart reading without diving into Chiron because it's going to allow me to figure out what, what's my client's wound. And, and, and from there, we're going to find out what are the ways in which we, in which we can bring that wound into a gift. Mm -hmm. If you see the symbol of Chiron, is a key with a K and the circle. The circle means um, infinity and it relates to, 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 to infinity. And the key relates to a key. The, the key is like the key to unlock, the key to unlock the power of Chiron. Like I said, individuals with a strong Chiron don't have it easy. Mm -hmm. They spend a lot of times 
they spend a lot of years healing, doing shadow work, and a lot of the times have abandonment issues or one of their parents is checked out. However, once the work is done, they can really become invincible. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about with uh, people with who have Chiron conjunct a natal planet or square in the sun, moon, or conjunct the ascendant, and even at the midheaven. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about, this is going to be fun, let's talk about Chiron in the zodiac signs. Mm -hmm. If you don't know your Chiron placement, you can find it by going to my website, www.naramon.com. There, I have a birth chart calculator that's completely free. You enter your date of birth and your year of birth, and you're going to get a drop down with all the with the location of all your planets and which signs there are, and you will uh, get Chiron almost at the very bottom. So if you don't, if you don't know your Chiron, please go check it out there. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Chiron in Aries. Mm hmm. Chiron in Aries relates to a wound of individuality, mm -hmm, masculine energy, and the ability to assert your will. And this is because Aries is ruled by Mars. And so the wound for these people is normally like around leadership, like not being able to to lead or not are believing that they can lead because perhaps their parents didn't allow them to be themselves. So remember that the mantra for Aries is I am. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, people with Chiron in Aries were just not allowed to be who they wanted to be. They were not allowed to express courage or their masculine energy. We, we see this a lot in charts of women mm -hmm. because of the time, because of the age, right? Like, like um, the epoch where they were, where they were born, uh, especially in patriarchal times, women were not allowed to assert themselves or like show courage. They just wanted to look pretty. So this is just an example because I've read for a lot of my clients that have, uh, female clients that have Chiron in Aries. And so this is also, remember, we're dealing with, when, wherever Chiron is, we're dealing with that collectively, mm -hmm. which is what's happening right now. As I'm doing this video, Chiron is being magnified by the lunar nord node, and in the world, we're healing the wound of toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. So I'm just giving you this example so you can relate it to it's meaning collectively, not just at a personal level. This video is about Chiron in your birth chart, but I just wanted to relate it to the collective because Chiron also rules the also rules the collective wound. Where is the collective wound right now? It is all about healing the patriarchy, toxic masculinity, and aggression, which we're seeing in a lot of parts of the world. So how do you heal Chiron in Aries? That is my second, right? In these slides, I put, what's your wound and how do you heal it? If you have Chiron in Aries, well, showing courage, being unapologetic about who you are or who you want to be. Mm -hmm. This is the truth. Not caring so much about what others want of you, your parents, your partner, your friends, and just chasing your goals working with your with your masculine energy too because masculine energy and i just want to be clear about this we're talking about masculine energy in every single one of us it's not just men mm -hmm. healing your masculine side is one of or should be one of the focuses of your work of your personal work and your spiritual work mm -hmm. being courageous being daring taking risks that is how you heal Chiron, right? And especially if you have 
a little bit of a problem putting yourself out there or showing up for yourself and showing your gifts. You heal Chiron by unapologetically being a leader, leading and helping others as well. Because like at the end of the day, Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac. And this is the interesting part. Mm -hmm. Chiron has an, uh, another reason why Chiron is an, an anomaly. It's because he doesn't have a, a, a regular orbit. Mm -hmm. Chiron spends most of the Chiron spends most time in a part of the Zodiac and less time on the other part of the Zodiac. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, it's kind of like, um, like Pluto. So for example, Chiron spends the most amount of time in Aries and the least amount in Libra. That's why there is an imbalance uh, of energetics here in the Zodiac. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to say that <laughs> earlier and I forgot. But um, you'll have a lot more people that have Chiron in Aries and Taurus and Gemini and way less people that have Chiron in Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. So this is really important because most of the clients that I see have Chiron in Aries, Taurus, Gemini. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Chiron in Taurus. If you have Chiron in Taurus, like me, <laughs> um, you, there, there's a wound around your Venusian energy. Mm -hmm. And Venus, unlike Mars, is receptive so you might think that or there might be something from a past life or from this life that makes you think that you don't deserve to feel pleasure mm -hmm. for whatever reason there might be a disconnection with the body as well between the mind and the body and there's something preventing you from fully opening yourself to pleasure because this is Venus. Mm -hmm. Also, alternatively, there could also be a wonder around your values, your value system, which is something you're going to work through to the entire of your life. Mm -hmm. Changing your values, um, keeping certain values from the past as well, prevailing values here here, and, and for your generation. And also, there's a wound around money because Venus rules money. So you might have a hard time asking for races. You might be working too much because Taurus is a hardworking sign without getting reciprocated. Or if you have your own business, you might sometimes have a difficulty charging your worth. Mm -hmm. So this, 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 is, this is a really intense wound, mm -hmm. a, a Venusian wound. And, and Venus is what we like, what we, what we enjoy. And so obviously healing Chiron in Taurus is about surrendering to experiencing pleasure. Mm-hmm to experiencing pleasure, to seek it, to receive it. And a lot of, a lot of us who have Chiron in Taurus also have pretty, I would say, sophisticated sexual kinks. Mm -hmm. That's what Barbara Handclaw says in her book, because like, because of the Venusian energy, a lot of us with this combination just have very specific sexual kinks. And because, because we don't deserve pleasure we might feel like oh our kinks are weird or our kinks are just bad to have mm -hmm. so it's really important if you have Chiron and Taurus to allow yourself to have all the pleasure as long as obviously it's not crossing the boundaries with anyone else but like accept your kinks and accept that you're worthy of money and pleasure mm -hmm. that might have to be that might have to involve um, asking for races and taking risks and maybe go out on your own as well. Because like when it comes to business, there's always going to be that chirotic wound. Mm -hmm. This is something I experienced during the 15 years that I worked in corporate America. I, I was always overpaid, underpaid, always underpaid. Mm -hmm. And so 
until I became aware of it. And trust me, I'm still working through this wound. Mm -hmm. I'm still working through it. Okay, so next is Chiron in Gemini. Mm -hmm. I've read for a lot of people with Chiron in Gemini and normally the wound is around self-expression. For one reason or another, these people were not allowed to express themselves. From like talking to acting to just, they were not able to, to, to say who they were. Mm -hmm. It's similar to Aries, but very different. Mm -hmm. And if you have Chiron in Gemini, your throat chakra is a very blocked. So healing, healing Chiron and Gemini involves mantras, like singing mantras every morning, self-expression. It might You might adopt a creative hobby. You might decide to launch a podcast to write about your experience. You might want to have a diary mm -hmm, because this is Mercury. Mercury rules Gemini. And so having a diary where you can pour all your feelings in, but working with the throat chakra, clearing it, opening it, and giving yourself that voice that you are not allowed to have is incredibly important for your healing journey. And the one thing too is there's the, there's a creative component to this because um, Mercury can be creative. Mm -hmm. So People that have Chiron in Gemini are attuned to mass, to mass consciousness. They know what people want. So that is also the wound turning into a superpower. Mm -hmm. Once you're able to express yourself, you can also attune to what people want, which can be really useful in business. Chiron in Cancer. This is one of the most difficult Chiron zodiac sign placements in my opinion because there's a wound around nurturance around a lot of the times is the mother because uh chiron is the sign of the divine mother there could be a wound around how like like the stomach like you might have like a very sensitive stomach because the moon rules food and, and nutrition mm -hmm. and especially if you have chiron in cancer and your moon is not in the greatest sign so I would say Aries Scorpio and Capricorn it's incredibly important that you do first of all past life regressions mm -hmm. why past life regressions because I believe that a lot of people that have Chiron in cancer have a wound that they're bringing from another life and from from their generation from their from their roots from their ancestrals mm -hmm. from their ancestral roots from like um their family it's it's family it's a family wound for most most of the time and so the only reason the only way to to truly heal this is by doing past life regressions uh family constellations and, and, and just nurturance, giving yourself all the love that you didn't receive for whatever reason, when you were a kid, when you were a baby even. Mm -hmm. And I'm calling it here mommy issues, okay? So this is the truth, not to offend anyone, but normally if you have Karen in cancer, it's like you have some mommy issues that need to be resolved. And because our mother is like the most important connection that we have when we come into this incarnation healing the mommy issues by mothering yourself by nurturing yourself and loving yourself is what's going to get you to the other side chiron in leo so the chiron in leo wound is around it's around creativity also because the sun is creative and, and, and Leo is ruled by the sun. But it is also about 
shine sh shine away from allowing other people to see your shine to see your gifts and what you bring to this incarnation you might have a really you might have a deep fear um of getting on stage mm -hmm, or having a talk in front of other people or or showing what you have to bring to the world you might be incredibly gifted you probably are obviously but there is a deep fear of taking space, mm -hmm. taking space or showing what you have to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And the, the healing comes when you embrace the energy of the sun, which is the star of our solar system. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? You embrace the Leo energy by being creative, by showing your gifts by shining mm -hmm. for example something that i love to do i was born on a sunday and i am a leo moon so for me sundays are almost sacred i really choose wisely what i do on a sunday because i usually tend to feel great on a sunday and for the most part i do i do something that i love doing which is hiking in the sun or alternatively being creative or enjoying art, enjoying creativity from other people. Because when you see other people shine and when you see other people being creative and feeling comfortable, then there's a bigger chance that you will feel comfortable doing the same. Mm -hmm. So I call it ritualize your Sundays. Okay, so Chiron in Virgo. This is a very prominent placement if you have Chiron in Virgo there's something special about your Chiron journey and the reason why is like some astrologers including me believe that Chiron rules Virgo and not Mercury mm -hmm. that you're not going to hear that anywhere because that's not really like part of the um traditional uh, astrological theory mm -hmm. but Barbara Hancloud makes a really good point about this right it, which is like Chiron rules the sixth house and rules Virgo because it is the healer itself mm -hmm. and people who have Chiron in Virgo are very anxious people for the most part or before they heal their wound are very they tend to be very anxious about perfectionism having everything right having everything extremely clean there's this anxiety about like oh, things not working out and it's just becoming the end of the world if things don't work out mm -hmm. the perfectionism and the control there's like a control here once they alchemize it these people become some of the most gifted healers and we're talking about natural homeopathic and like energetic and quantum healers. We're not talking about in a hospital. Some of them do have that. Mm -hmm. But Chiron is about natural healing. It is about embracing or um, activating the natural healing abilities that we that our bodies already have. And that's what Chiron is all about. And more and more, I've been seeing people with really strong Chirons or with a lot of Virgo in their charts transitioning from like nursing jobs and all of that into more of like natural healing, the natural healing arts. So this is a really important placement because like at the end of the day, the highest vibration of Virgo is being of service. And Chiron in Virgo people are in this incarnation to be of service to help others heal in a way they're very like Chiron itself and so I agree that Chiron rules Virgo mm -hmm. so that's kind of like whoa I've heard it very few in very few places and very but but it makes sense to me mm -hmm. and there, there there are other things to talk about but I'm, I'm not going to get into this now but this is how I feel as well Chiron in Libra. So this is this is the sign where Chiron spends the least amount of time in Chiron in, in Libra because it spends the most amount of time in Aries. And with Chiron in Libra, there is this 
it's similar with Virgo with like the kind of like obsession, but it's more towards relationships and like really losing yourself in other people's desires, opinions of yourself. You have Karen in Libra. If you're some of the few people that have it, you might be one of those people that need to be with somebody, like can't stay single mm -hmm. because I need someone to compare myself to or um, unfortunately copy them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people with displacement do that. Once they've worked through 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 the the healing, once they've gone on the other side of the alchemy of Chiron, they become amazing observers observers of other people. See, that's different. That's different than like copycats. It's a little bit more like observing. They learn a lot about themselves through observing others because the mantra "relationships are mirrors" really speaks to this Chiron placement. Mm -hmm. But until then, there's these, there might be these like constant desire to like have new friends and new circles and new people, new, 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 like because of like Libra's shadow side, mm -hmm. the shadow side of Libra is superficiality. Mm -hmm. The highest vibration of Libra is relating, mm -hmm. relating from a place of power, from a place of strength. But the shadow side of Libra is not needing to relate to someone or needing to do things like every like like other people are doing it or needing their permission mm -hmm. but again this can be fixed by just becoming aware of it a lot of the times with my clients honestly awareness is everything once i validate something or bring awareness to something like chiron there's the magic moment for them Mm -hmm. There's a like, ah, just, just by, just by having an astrologer tell you this, you can really begin the healing journey. Chiron in Scorpio. Mm -hmm. Again, this is, this is not a very obvious, there, there's not a lot of people with Chiron in Scorpio and I'm kind of glad because it's a really intense chirotic wound, you know, like everything Scorpio. I'm a Scorpio. I'm a Scorpio sun. So this is the wound. This is a Martian and Plutonian wound. So these people might have... There, there's a wound around sexuality. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily pleasure like Taurus. This is about sexuality. It is about intimacy, power dynamics, control, and sometimes abuse. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the wound gets to be that that intense if you have Chiron in Scorpio you might be completely afraid of merging with someone at an intimate level which is what Scorpio wants to do perhaps because you were really hurt before you were very hurt in a past life even mm -hmm. this is a very mystical and very intense Chiron but it has the capability of becoming immensely powerful because we know the Scorpio rises from the ashes and so once that is healed it can really help with both Chiron in Libra and Chiron in Scorpio clearing the sacral chakra mm -hmm. clearing the sacral chakra is in really important in the case of Libra it, it, it is, it is, that is, that should be done to get the uh, energy from other people out of your, out of your aura, out of your erethic field. And with Scorpio, there's a similar, there's a similar situation as well. Like, because you have karma from, from a past life, mm -hmm. Pluto, a lot of the times in my, in my work and, the, and through the work that I've done through the Akashic Records, Pluto relates to past lives. And so... If you have Chiron in Scorpio, you're carrying a wound from a past life that you have stuck in your sacral chakra because it is about relationships and sexual energy. So clearing that and, and, and healing that part of your body is going to be crucial with both of these Chiron placements. Chiron in Sagittarius. 
Chiron in Sagittarius is very philosophical. Mm -hmm. It is a wound around faith and belief. If you have this placement, you might think that there is no God or there is no higher power and there is there there's really no fortune out there that everyone everything's just stands chance everything's by chance and there's just no you might not even believe in astrology <laughs> right because like no, we're just here and everything's just a game well that's not true <laughs> and the sooner you figure that out the sooner you can find the healing and the reason why this is a cycle a, a cycle, um philosophical wound is because there is a wound around Jupiter, mm -hmm. which is the planet of optimism and the planet of spirituality. So there's a wound around spirituality here. Mm -hmm. The healing comes with learning, learning and diving into esoteric practices or like tr even traveling and exploring the world for you to realize that there is a higher, the higher power. There is luck. There, there, there is something bigger at play. There is, there is the Akasha. There are angels. There are spirits. And, 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 and they're here to guide you. Mm -hmm. So diving into esoteric practices and learning about anything, tarot, astrology, mysticism, is what will get you healed if you have Chiron in Sagittarius. Chiron in Capricorn is the next, and this is also an intense wound because it is a wound related to Saturn, which relates to success, ambition, and the ability to build something meaningful. Mm -hmm. These are a lot of the people, like actually, uh, like Chiron in Virgo, Chiron in Capricorn, people, can be those that overwork themselves, that are like crazily chasing, getting to the top of the biggest mountain and they like burn the candle at both ends and it's never enough and it's never enough success and there's never enough um, money or, or anything that they relate to being a successful person. They tend to sometimes even block everyone that will show them. They, they'll seek this success um, and they'll lose relationships, they'll lose their own life. So working with, with self-nurturance, with self-love is really important here because if you have Chiron and Capricorn, for the most part, there's so wound around the father mm -hmm, because Saturn a lot of the times relates to the father. So there's a wound around the father figure or there's a wound around family as well because um, Saturn rules karma. So there might be something karmic here from a past life. And the healing really just comes from nurturance to working with, from working with the moon. If your moon, because Saturn and the moon have a really strong connection too. And because Cancer is the opposite sign to Capricorn. Mm -hmm. Working with your moon placement can be really helpful, especially if you have the moon in Aries, Scorpio, or Capricorn. Mm -hmm. you, might, you might have problems finding nurturance in your life. And so very similar to Chiron in Cancer, there is a deeper dive that needs to be taken to past lives as well, but also being conscious about the way that you chase success and goals and the way you build something meaningful, like building something meaningful is some, something meaningful is great, but not if it's going to be at the expense of your own body and your life force. Mm -hmm. Chiron in Aquarius. Like Chiron in Virgo, this is a special placement because Uranus rules Aquarius. And so these people are electric. Mm-hmm. This can be great. Like, let's talk about the lower vibration of this. The lower vibration is people that are very nervous, very jittery, that they can't ground. There's there's this uncomfort with being in this physical body. Mm -hmm. Star-seated, 
people I'm, I'm imagining that are from another galaxy, right? right? Probably have a lot of them have Chiron in Aquarius because it's it just feels like I'm not from this world. Like I'm here. I incarnated here, but I'm not from here. So the healing comes when you ground into Mother Earth. Chiron in Aquarius makes you someone that can be so magnificently genius with amazing ideas. But that energy can only happen when you're grounded when you're grounded so you can channel the energy of Uranus. Mm -hmm. Barbara Hemklaus says that Uranus at the end of the day is the genius energy that we want to achieve. But it can be achieved if you're like jumping from them one place to the next and like one from one job to the next and just not really knowing and kind of like not feeling comfortable in your own skin. Mm -hmm. So grounding mechanisms like chakra balancings are your healing modality. Like do that every single morning. Mm -hmm. There's also a wound around not belonging because there's, there's a feeling of being an outcast or just not being accepted by your community. Maybe you felt like you weren't liked in your school or that, that the kids were mean to you because you were different. Mm-hmm. That will never change because like Aquarius is the outcast, but like doing work from for, for your community without needing to be accepted mm -hmm, or becoming an activist or doing big work for what you believe in or for society, like thinking like have like this big kind of like beyond beyond what I think or how I feel kind of like making a stand in the world. That is also something that can really help you. At the end of the day, you don't need to belong because you're unique. And, and that is your gift. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, Chiron in Pisces. Mm -hmm. These are super duper incredibly sensitive people. All pi like all Pisces placements. But with Chiron, there really is this fear of outside energies like outside influences, like other people's energies coming into your orbit because you're a sponge. Mm -hmm. If you have Chiron in Pisces, you probably are incredibly afraid of spending time in like crowds or like go to big concerts or go to like big masses or like big events because you take on energy from other people. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, you might have this deep fear of people taking advantage of you because also Chiron in Pisces relates to feelings of victimization or um, what is the word that I used here? I like can't find it right now. Um, like being being taken advantage by other people because this is Neptune mm -hmm. and the the darker side of Neptune, which which is seen at first and then it evolves obviously the darkest side of Neptune is um, that somebody maliciously took advantage of you in a past life or even when you were young here and so that's why you don't trust there's no there's no way for you to trust because you were taken advantage you were lied to or or somebody just took advantage of you the healing comes when like hey you need to start learning how to protect your energy um, that's something I do because I have Pisces South Node, so I'm extremely sensitive. Um, protecting your energy when you get out of the house so you can you can be more comfortable in bigger crowds. And also adopting a really, really, really deep and, and constant spiritual practice. That's what's going to help you trust more. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to bring out your compassion instead of being so fearful of someone's going to lie to me, someone's going to steal from me, or just trusting. Mm -hmm. And it will make room for the good side of Neptune to come into your life, which is compassion and love and oneness. Because at the end of the day, we are all one. And that might sound really scary to you, like, we are all one. No, 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 I don't want to be one way of the holidays, people. Are you kidding me? But we are. That is the truth. And your wound with Chiron in Pisces is to heal that. Heal that. Mm -hmm. 
So let me just stop sharing the slides and thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions about this, drop them in the comments. I am super duper obsessed with Chiron. I think it, the fact that I have it conjunct my, my ascendant has been a huge healing process for me. Chiron has really helped me evolve and, and really come out of my trauma, which like I just so you know, I do have the, 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 the wound of abandonment uh, from my father. I've healed it. I talk to him all the time now. He's around. And I just want to share that with you because it's been such an important part of my healing journey mm -hmm. to understand, to go beyond what feels like abandonment, which it actually wasn't. So it was all up in my head and it was psychological. And if you want to um, explore your Chiron, your Chiron wound and, and, and your healing and your journey, I offer readings. I offer readings and you can book them on my website, www.naramon.com, or there's a link here uh, on this on this post and all of the other posts. But thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.